Welcome on in, everybody. This is Words Are Hard. I'll be your host today, the Mad Viking King himself, Scuba Battles, baby! Yes, and we have our first guest, which is going to be Storm of Iron, joining us today. How are you doing, my dude? I'm doing good. I'm doing rather fantastic. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Thank you again for uh, joining us today, my dude. Absolutely my pleasure. Totally um, no problem. So, I'm just going to go looking out. forward to it. Yes, uh, we've been playing this for a while. Like, look at this man. A little bit. Look little at bit. this man. Little- little length of time absolutely the beard like you know you support the bearded brotherhood i see (laughs) so i'm happy to i'm happy to see that man i'm really happy to see that so uh first off i want to go ahead and say thank you for taking time out of your day to make this happen no problem um i'm gonna say that and then uh the other thing is uh today's topics it's going to be a little bit everywhere um i want to get to know a little bit more about you and we're gonna have some fun so that is our ultimate goal, okay? I am looking forward to this. And like topics that go all over the place. That's that's my specialty. That's my cup of tea right there. That's good. That's good. Okay, so the first question I got for you yep. is going to be so tell me just uh the l- little bit l- like tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Um that is a rather open-ended question right there. That's true. Uh, that's true. All right. How about this? I am how about Storm this? of Iron, <laughs> hey. first off. Okay. All right. Well, hey, tell me how you got the name Storm of Iron. Let's start off there. Let's start off from the beginning, and then we're just going to like kind of ease from our way the in. the very beginning. So yes. with that said, Storm of Iron came about because I needed a PlayStation Network name for gaming on the PlayStation. Okay. And I took a look around and tried to decide what I wanted to use, and I found a book. That was a Warhammer 40k novel, and it was called Storm of Iron. And I was like, you know what? That works for me. I'm going to roll with that. And it's kind of hung around ever since I actually started gaming on the PlayStation. So the the, the first time that I, I had to make a PlayStation screen name. So that's where that actually came from. And then when it came time for Twitch and everything else, it just kind of evolved from there. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right, that's fair. Um, wow. So, okay, so the next thing I'll ask is, like, when it comes to Twitch, okay? When it comes to streaming and everything else, what is something that, what it, like, what brought you, like, what, what said, okay, you know, I'm going to just go ahead, I'm going to dive, I, I love playing video, because you love playing video games, oh, obviously. Yeah, definitely video games. Like, All you know, I'm not going to act like I don't know you, because you are a good friend of mine. <laughs> um, I know that you love playing video games, you're just like me, a gamer, right? You know, growing up, um, you know, you got to experience, like, all the old games, the Nintendo, the Sega, and I could, that's, you know, we're going to stay on top, we're going to stay on track, but I will ask you, so... When it comes to streaming, like, did you naturally just have that persona where you just wanted to open up? Like, what what foundation did you want to start when you when you said, "Okay, I want to sit down. I want to start a Twitch channel. All right, this is what I want to do. I want to create some sort of content that can bring people together." You're like, "What was your initial idea? And what did like what implementations have you made since you first started?" It was kind of interesting because I had never been one for Twitch watching other people play video games. Um, If I needed like a guide or a hint or a tip or something like that, you'd head over to YouTube, you'd check something out, look at a playthrough. But originally, um, Twitch came about because of when the world sort of took a collective dump at the beginning of, um, what are we in, 2022 now? So basically at the beginning of 2020. I think is when everything really kind of came to a crashing screeching halt. Um, I was home for like, they laid me off for a number of weeks and my portal to the outside world became my computer and interacting with people like that. Found one of my favorite celebrities had actually created a Twitch channel. Uh, One Gigi Edgeley who actually played Chiana in the sci-fi show Farscape a number of years back. So she created a Twitch channel. And through that, and going into Twitch, and then meeting people, and then doing stuff, and interacting with people, and she actually had a point where 
she would begin to interview various different members of her Twitch tribe on her Twitch channel. And I think I was the second one up. And I was like, you know what? I like doing this. This is kind of fun. I like talking to people. I like engaging with people like this. I like going back and forth and having real fun conversation. So I started streaming directly from my PlayStation. And initially it was with Assassin's Creed Valhalla when it came out. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Yep. So as you already know, I, you can tell probably from my background. Yes. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So, okay. So that's awesome that you, so you like, you was already, before you even like started streaming, you basically already had in your head, you're like, okay, so I want to go ahead and I want to pick at other people's brains and get different perspectives of like, well, what do you guys feel about this? You know, like basically seeing other people's lives in a nutshell, if you think about it, like that's what we do, you know, because I'm a, you know, I'm a streamer just like yourself and I know what it's like, you know, when you're making that connection, the different relationships that, you know, we make along yep. the way, meeting new people. And then like, you kind of, you kind of feel fulfilled about that. Right. Yeah. It's fun. It, it's definitely fun making connections with people, people you wouldn't normally meet in everyday life. Um, being able to bridge a gap using something like a video game. Right. So you've got people across the country and across the world it's insane. that you have these awesome conversations with. And even though culturally we might be different, our viewpoints might be different, there's one particular thing that brought us together or you know, created a single point in time which allowed us to meet, and then we go from there. And we talk to each other. We learn from each other. We get to um, experience each other's culture. We get to just have like a genuine interaction as human beings without all of the garbage that goes in between. And I still think video games are probably one of the purest forms of connecting because like, yeah, sure. You've got some, you know, more slightly toxic stuff like call of duty where you're just straight up trying to murder someone else. And tempers may rise I, I think yeah i think i think i think we all you know the call the call of duty all right you're being called out okay we we remember we no nobody needs to go back all right call of duty four all right the camping pitching up your tents yeah. okay we spawn all is there camping. yes absolutely so okay so camping. to dive a little bit deeper okay we're, we're gonna have some fun with this all right because mm -hmm. i i've already seen like you know i i know that you usually have a green screen up and we're kind of yep. breaking the fourth wall right now a little bit so, yeah, this is, this is, so this i is have my, to ask because i'm all about looking at people's backgrounds okay yep. all right i see the uh wall uh, i don't know if that's a tapestry or if that's a uh poster that's a that guy right there is a big poster. Okay. All right. So now, uh, now you're into Vikings like myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, you know, when it comes to the Viking culture, like what is one thing that sticks out to you? Um, I definitely appreciate the mythology. I definitely appreciate the idea that for uh, various Norse cultures that their gods walked among them and it wasn't just something that they made sacrifices to and never got something back from they were they were always interacting with their pantheon of deities um you know thor and odin and freya and you know balder and all of these gods that represented something to them uh the 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 wonderful mythology that exists for each of them the stories that we still have today, um, the, you know, everything that archaeologists have discovered and learned, it's, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And it's a, it's a culture that didn't just stay in one place. They went everywhere. They went absolutely everywhere. Their artwork, their, you know, their, their uh, poetry, um, it's stuff that we still actually are lucky enough to have to this day so basically what you're impressive. saying is like their way of life uh like everything like how they live and their day-to-day -day routines and everything else like you know it, it's kind of like with me uh personally um I, I i'm a disabled vet you know uh come from the military and the camaraderie is what really like stood stood out to me 
So I definitely feel that. Now, the next question, we're going to have some fun, okay? Okay. Because I'm all about having a blast. I got to ask, the Pikachu uh, in the background, is that a beanie? By any oh, chance? that's a hat, all right. That's a hat. Oh, yeah. That is, oh my God. Yes. You have to put it on. Yes. You need to put this on. Absolutely. I want to see this. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is so back when I was a loot crate subscriber, this oh. actually came through from a loot crate. Yep. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Between that, like I saw that and I also saw, is that a sailor's cap? Um, that up there is like uh they call it a Greek fisherman's hat, but okay. more so it looks like something that a um like an ice cream truck man, <laughs> like the good humor man would would wait, wear. Wait, wait. So <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> because there was one year uh for Halloween, I dressed up as like an ice cream man. I had oh a my white, god, you dressed white, up as yeah. an ice cream man. Yeah, okay. white button down, so tell um, us the story. like a white button down shirt. Uh, <laughs> it was like a short sleeve white button down shirt and a pair of like white Dickies work pants and then that hat. And it was just oh like, oh my gosh, yeah, it just seemed like the thing to do with the time. Awesome. So. Okay, now how old was you when this happened? Was you was oh, this geez, like this early twenties like or? No, God, no. Oh, we're talking I was well into my thirties. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Dude, I do stupid stuff all the time. So, you love it, though. You, know, you love yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, if, if the moment moves you, why not go for it? Who the it, hell cares? And you're passionate about it. And that's why I respect you. That is one reason why, you know, <laughs> I wanted to bring you on as a, my first uh, guest. Thank you again. I appreciate it. So, Pikachu. Okay. Let's let's dive in on another side branch. I don't, I don't even like Pokemon. I you just don't? think that's hysterical. <laughs> don't even... I, just, I, don't even, I don't even care about Pokemon. Oh my I just, I absolutely God. think the hats. All the Pokemon out. fans out there, just. Sorry, my bad. Omaewa. <laughs> Shinelu. Just, just. Nani? Just Nani? Like, I feel my, bad. My hat is not voiced by Ryan Reynolds, so, you know. Oh my gosh. Ryan Reynolds is an absolute saint. 100%. Yep. 100%. Okay, so not a Pokemon fan, but you got it. You got it free. Why not keep Hell it, yeah. right? Just Absolutely. Roll with it. Because why not? Okay. All right. So let's... Uh... <laughs> I, I love it, man. I absolutely... I'm having a great time. I hope you are as well. <laughs> the, the funny thing about it is the Pokemon hat is actually sitting on top of like a... Nutcracker. Like a, is that a, a Nutcracker? Yeah. It's a three-foot-tall Nutcracker. <laughs> what do you have a Nutcracker? Why do you... Like, I'm just... Okay, I know that, like, I want to get... You know, I want to bring you on because, you know, I want people to get to know you as well as a little bit of fun, okay? <laughs> so, uh, the Nutcracker. All right. I have to. I was in stories. CVS one time. C um, no. Yeah. Oh yeah. CVS has CVS has some of the best holiday kind of stuff. Like in Easter, you've got all the Easter candy, the Easter baskets, the plush Easter toys. Um, they make the plush peeps, and there's a story about that as well. I'm not going to get into it right at the moment. Um, I'm sorry. You know, did so you just say pl pl like like plushy like plush like peeps? Yeah. Like little stuffed peeps. So they're not made of marshmallows. They're actually stuffed little peeps. Uh -huh. And they range in size. They range in size from small ones to very, 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 very big ones that are over probably a good three feet tall as well. That's so intimidating. That's so... It's kind of funny. Actually, so... Um, so back to the Nutcracker. Yes, back okay. to the Nutcracker. Stevie, has, it, was, it, was, uh, it was Christmas. Okay. And no, it was after Christmas because it was on a discount. So it yes. was a, everything is 50% off. And apparently, okay. for some reason, nobody wanted to take home the three-foot-tall nutcracker. So while I was in there picking up probably like a bag of candy or something stupid okay. like that, I decided to purchase myself a three-foot-tall nutcracker. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. Yeah. That is, okay. You know what? We love it. All right. The nutcracker needs to stay. I feel that. We all have our sporadic. Okay. So yeah. out of everything, that was buy. so so I was gonna ask you. <laughs> that's actually my follow up question. So when it comes to getting something, what is what, what is something that you have bought, but you didn't regret, but you you definitely question it every time you see it. Um, well, <laughs> it's funny you mention that because there's a lot of stories like that. Uh, I bought my brother a Christmas gift one time, and it was a ceramic gnome 
He was probably like a like a two foot tall. Oh, no, wait, wait. No, no, no. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you bought. You bought. Wait. You bought. You bought your brother a ceramic two foot two foot right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just. It's, I'm, it was I'm just trying like, to imagine it was like this little a little squat like looking gnome foot, dude. So, oh yeah. So literally, like probably up to my knee. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's like knee high. Yeah, like a okay, like a legitimate like large ceramic gnome <laughs> with a hat and everything. <laughs> so like we're just talking like generic like red hat, you know, like lawn. Um, are we talking like lawn gnome? It that was, it it looked like a lawn gnome. So okay. it was it was ceramic and it was like all one color. It was like this funny brown tan kind of color, and. It was really strange looking when I wrapped it up because it was just, it had the giant pointed hat and it was just rounded at the bottom. So the wrapping paper just all over it. It was okay. Chaotic. Okay. So I have to ask, did that like give it away? Like what did, what was the reaction when you just walk into a room, right? I could just imagine this. And as a present, the first thing you see, like you see regular boxes, you're like, okay, this is probably closed. You know, we, we've all been through the, um, how should I put it? The cycle of like, we, we kind of, you know, like you shake it a little bit. It's like, you know, you, you give it a little bit of sniff test. Have you, uh, have you ever like sniff, like, <laughs> like you get in there and you start like, you know, just like really, really start like, mm. like getting the aroma, you know, like just really, really just trying to figure out what it is. And then like all of a sudden in the corner, you just see this pointy, like yep. oddly shaped. Like, did he figure it out before? Like, he ripped it open and I think like partially. He he picked it up. It was kind of weighty, and okay. he was like, "What the <laughs> hell is this?" And then after he opened it, he looked at me and he was like, "You've got problems." Uh, like, well, you know. So so he just unwrapped it and like, what was the yep. so the initial reaction? Like, was he excited? Just looking at me and, and he was just shaking his head. He, <laughs> did he, he, keep, did his he head. keep it? Does he still have it? I I think it's somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere. I don't so know he where does still it is, have it, but what it's legend. probably somewhere. What a legend. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as the show is, it, this is uh, called Words Are Hard um, for a reason. Okay, because let's face it. At the end of the day, uh, I have problems. Uh, if you ever you know have stopped by, um, I I I definitely have problems with words. Pronunciations are the absolute worst. Uh, English class was not my favorite. Um, <laughs> so what is like something that you have, like, do you ever have trouble with words as well? And if you do, what is like one word out of the dictionary that you just, or like a couple, like a phrase or something that just like your brain literally is just sitting there like, okay, what? <laughs> so... I've always been fairly well spoken. Okay. And I can actually probably cold read something from like Edgar Allan Poe, like that older kind of like that old, old like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um But do you ever have that moment again, your brain? Like your brain is like literally like oh like oh my god, like I I I, I you're just it, it can't process. So for example, right, okay, let's use Twitch. All right, let's okay. go back. Let's go back to because, you know, that's what you do. I want, people want to get to know you. Um, what is like a username or something that just oh, Jesus. literally there, like because that's a word. It is a word yeah. is considered yep. a name, but it's also a word. I try to be really good about pronouncing people's names correctly. And sometimes some of the most difficult words are always going to be just this random string that someone has in their head. They go. Oh my God, this is the best Twitch name ever. I'm going to use it. And to them, it makes sense. And it's a whole bunch of like letters and numbers. And it's like really clever and thought out. But anybody else who looks at it and reads it, they're like, nope, don't know. Don't know what that is. It's just blah, 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 blah. But, but then it's like, you know, Captain Hamburger or something. And Captain that's their name. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. So, so out of all the words, that's the one that we're going to go with is Captain Hamburger. That, like, what, like, you don't have to use a, an actual Twitch name because I don't want uh, anyone to feel like they're being called out. Oh, I have no idea who Captain Hamburger really is. Okay. Well, to Captain Hamburger, shout out to you. Okay. There you go. If, if, if that exists, which it Captain more than Hamburger, likely there does. You go, buddy. 
the All right. Jinx is on. It more than likely does. It's probably there's probably a meme behind it or something else. So all right, let's 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 try to get back on track. Um, so a little bit about yourself. So okay, Storm of Iron gamer tag, right? Yep. Okay. Now, does that have any significance towards you as a person, like uh, blacksmithing, or uh, is it like, uh, because, you know, I could tell you a little bit about my name uh, as well. So, like, Mad Viking King, originally it came from uh, a guy known as Shellback Tech. I am going to squeeze in this uh, shout out to the charity. Uh, if you guys don't know, Shellback Tech is a 501c charity organization. He builds uh, disabled, uh, he builds customized computers for disabled veterans like myself. I am a recipient, and also for disabled first responders. Uh, the link to that will be in the description down below. And if you guys have any comments about our shows and like you know things that you think would be fun, uh, that will be in the link as well as Storm of Iron's Twitch link because I definitely want to put that out there and uh, help him out as well. So guys, thank you again for being here. Um, I had to squeeze that in. I had to squeeze no, that right. in. Um, but, but like, I I have I have a huge huge interest in like all things automotive uh cars and trucks and things like that and it's kind of i mean when when you're when you're talking about cars and trucks and things like that they are metal they are um iron and aluminum and glass and plastic and, and all kinds of stuff and um you know racing and drag racing and circle track racing and things like that where it's like it's just a storm of iron it is a you know just kind of a, a barrage of everything you know, gasoline and diesel powered and mechanical, you know, just a, a cacophony of awesome, essentially. So, so literally like, cause I'm not going to lie, you know, I, I wanted to dress up, you know, I, I wanted to like, kind of, you know, give off that kind of host kind of vibe or whatever, uh, to anyone that's like been, uh, to any of, uh, my streams or, you know, me, uh, I don't usually wear a suit, but I it's a special occasion and everything. So you give off like that kind of like punk rock kind of feel, dude. I feel that. <laughs> so I have to ask what is, like, I know you listen to heavy metal that, without a doubt. I do as yep. well. I listen to a variety of music. If you had to choose, right. It doesn't have to be your favorite artist, but favorite artist or favorite genre. If you could choose, uh, one of those. Because I feel, I get that vibe, you know, you're like, okay, Storm of Iron, you know, like, uh, we're big into, you know, um, automotives, um, you know, anything that like, just literally just screams kind of like heavy metal, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I feel, I feel that, you know, and, um, I'm really enjoying to get to know a little bit about you and everyone else as well. So heavy metal artist, do you have anyone particular that... Uh, Try just... listening to, uh, and, and this one basically ticks all the right boxes, but okay. if you have Metallica and Fuel. My man, my man, already, my man. Yep. Literally. See? Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is exact. Metallica Ride the Lightning is my favorite album of yep. all time. It was one of their very first albums. I literally, like, I, I, I love, I love Metallica. I love Metallica. The, the, I think their music is absolutely insane. It's always going to be my number one. So, yes. Well, why Metallica? So, why, why that? Metallica was one of those genres that, or, or one of those artists that early on it was, and for me, it was all the way up until, like, the Black Album was big when I was in high school. And, you know, you had everything that they had going right up until then. But then they did, you know, a little bit of different stuff. They did Load and Reload, which which came out, and they were different. And it was weird because it was like, this isn't Metallica. This is, like, different Metallica. And songs like Fuel hit the radio. And if you want an ultimate drive-fast song, Fuel is hands down one of the best. And I dare you to not put the pedal down when you're listening to something like that when it hits the radio. So... It's just, it's, it's great. It's great musically and lyrically, you know, you have far deeper stuff that's out there, but it's just, it, it's, it's definitely what you're feeling at the time. It, it's, it's a lot of aggressive stuff. It's a lot of really fast, hard driving stuff. And it's, it's fun. It's always fun. And originally one of the bands that actually, and one of the bands and one of the albums that got me into music more back in middle school was Judas Priest's Painkiller album. 
and yes. that stuff was awesome. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. So we know a little bit about you. All right. We got your name, how you got your name and everything, which I didn't know. So I, I'm, I'm glad I asked. Um, a little bit about like how you like you automatically, you know, you was already on shows, you was already natural at it, you know, uh, you are very clear with your speaking. I could definitely take a page from that book because my brain it has it moves like thousands of miles, <laughs> and you know, words are words are hard for me, I, I, you know, and that's why I wanted to make the show words are hard because. I think that people have problems, you know, when it comes to explaining certain things and everything and add some flavor to it, you know, Yep. like overall. Okay. So my next, uh, my next, my next thing I want to ask you is, okay, so music and everything else, and we're going to kind of make this a little bit fun because you know, that's what I want. I want you to have some fun as well. So what is something, if you don't mind me asking, what is mm -hmm. something that you have done either it was on the internet when it like because we grew up in a age where the internet was growing or I'm, yep. I'm going back to my space okay like yep. you had the playlist everything is there anything you've uploaded on the internet and regretted it something embarrassing if you don't mind uh, me asking or something embarrassing, embarrassing? Even, if you, even if you didn't upload it something embarrassing that is absolutely hysterical that you'd love to share with us. I, so once upon a time, um, I had a little digital camera and it was like a, it was a, what the hell was it? Nikon cool pics or whatever the hell it was, but it could, it could record, it could record video halfway decently. And I got around to doing some stuff that was fully intent upon sharing and putting up on like uh you know youtube or you know I, I had it back before i was actually you know like youtube was super big for for what i was interested in and doing and stuff um i still have video clips and i still have stuff where someone gave me a called me elmo doll that they had got from a christmas kind of yankee swap sort of thing an elmo and doll a tickle me Elmo doll. So you hit the belly and it goes, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, that tickles. <laughs> oh, no, no, so no, no. <laughs> I was kicking around the idea of what can I do with this tickle me Elmo doll? Okay. So right. <laughs> because I am around automotive stuff, okay. because I am around car parts and car things, um, I came into my possession automotive airbags, like the kind that go off when you smack yes. a telephone pole. yes. They explode. They are an explosive device. Oh, no. And I will say absolutely emphatically, do not try this at home. Okay. Thank so you. Thank we, you. <laughs> we, prefacing that right there. Yes. So we took an airbag oh, and we God. set it on the ground out back of where I work, like way, way out back. Yeah. And we put the Tickle Me Elmo doll on top of, because it's like a rectangular, it had a very nice flat kind of rectangular shape to it. Yes. So we put the Tickle Me Elmo doll on the top of it okay we ran some wire leads so it was a safe distance away we had a battery and then all you have to do is well you do what you do with electricity and you kick this thing off uh totally don't try this at home um and we watched how high that elmo doll was launched into the air he went up there oh boy he went up you, there and wait. he went soaring <laughs> like an eagle let me get this straight. You launched an Elmo doll with deployable airbags. Okay, that, my friends, do not try that at home, but that is brilliant. And I appreciate that story. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> there was also the time with a pumpkin that I blew up with an airbag. You blew up a Wait, was it? Yeah. Oh my God. God. So, okay, so, um, all right, I love things that uh, go boom, okay, you know, I, I love, you know, the chaos and everything, I grew up with Jackass, uh, Johnny Knoxville, um, oh, yeah. all of them, bam, They've bam, with their bags. and yep. yeah, yeah, if you've ever seen them, you know, you, we know, it's a little bit of a classic, um, so, okay, so, overall, <laughs> I can't believe, I can just imagine Elmo flying in the... <laughs> Tickle. I'll send you the video clip. Just man. literally, just clip. sending it to outer space. Just yeah, just full send. 
Just full. Oh yeah. <laughs> you'll have to send, send. You'll have to send 100%. me that. You'll have to send me that. Yep. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. The, <laughs> the pumpkin though was slightly different because I actually opened. I I found a nice pumpkin, and it was big enough where I could cut it open and I could sort of insert the airbag. I had a smaller airbag. Oh it was like God. one of those side impact airbags, and you insert the pumpkin. You insert the airbag into the pumpkin, and then ran some wire leads out of it so that we could attach the cables to. My God. I sealed it up and I duct taped it shut. But I was like, you know what? This needs a little bit more oomph. It needs a little bit more pop to it. So I bored a hole in top of the pumpkin and I went to the store and I got like 72 fluid ounces of ketchup and I filled the pumpkin with ketchup. And then it went boom. We, we lit it off and that thing went no, boom. No, 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 no. And the okay. mess that that thing made was pretty <laughs> impressive. You filled it off with ketchup. Yeah. Yeah, fill the pumpkin right. up with ketchup and so what it was, with an airbag. Like, what was going in your mind? Like, well, like, did, was you just like, you know, my God. Uh, it was just, this is going to be fun. Again, do not try this at home. Okay. Yeah, don't try it at home. Okay, this is, this is past experience, okay? Um, to anyone who's watching this. Um, and, um, wow, okay. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's, switch, let's switch it around a little bit. Thank you for sharing those amazing stories. I Not really do problem. appreciate that. Um, all right, so let's switch this around. So, all right, so Storm of Iron, you know, I want, I want to get to know you. The people watching this want to get to know you a little bit. So we're talking heavy metal. We're talking, you know, you're into podcasts. You're into talk shows. Obviously, you're on mine, uh, yep. which I'm very appreciative of. We love, I love having you on here, man. Um, all right, so content creating, you know, your job. Let's, let's, let's. Let's dial into that a little bit. Let's, okay. tap, let's, let's tap into it. So when, uh, when it comes to Twitch.tv, it is a streaming platform where you can create a variety of content, including art, music, video games, and podcasts, talk shows, D&D sessions, the whole nine yards. The sky is the limit on content because that is what content creating is. So my question for you is what exactly, like, you know, you said you started on your PlayStation. Okay, yep. I understand that. I started on uh, a little bit with Xbox, and it wasn't. I wasn't taking it serious. But when, in the at a point in time, was you like, okay, I want to do this. I want to upgrade. I want to take this a little bit more serious. Like, what idea? Like, I, 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 would you like me to give me you give you an example? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Okay, so like for me, like I was like, okay, I want to do charity events. I want to keep serving my country, even though I no no longer in the military. So I was like, all right, I want to build up a community. You know, I had a plan and whatever. I hit affiliate, and then I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna start taking things a little bit more serious. Time goes on. I've been doing it for about three years now. Um, coming up in May. So what, like, what was that turning point? You know, like what was. You know, what keeps you going? Like, what what exactly, how I, did all of Storm of Iron's channel, like, begin? I decided to get a capture card. I decided to get a capture card and pipe everything into my laptop and then kind of see what I could make from there. Um, then I bought a mic from Amazon and eventually just started upgrading little bits and pieces. And I was like, you know what? I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy really conversing and engaging with people. Um, and it wasn't until I started playing a game like SnowRunner where people really started to kind of come on in because it was a very strange game. It's not fast-paced. It's not uh, like an action game. It's not a racing game. It's just simply, for, for lack of a better descriptor, it's a off-road trucking simulator where you're just taking cargo from point A and delivering it to point B. And the community around that game is really passionate about it. And they're also very supportive of other SnowRunner streamers. So I started making friends within the SnowRunner community. And it was fun because a lot of people started coming in. And started to take notice. And we're like, hey, you know, this is this is cool to watch. This is fun to to hang out. And it was something that was fun to play. But 
then I realized the game kind of became the backdrop for what I liked doing. For me, the game was in the background because I get to a point where I could play this game with my brain completely off. I love the game, love playing the game, enjoy the hell out of the game. And I could play it like I wasn't paying attention. And that allowed Basically, me Basically, to... it was like a side thing. I apologize yeah. for interrupting, but like oh, it was um, it was like a side thing because I, I felt that like you yeah. wanted to, you know, chat with people and then like have yep. it in the, as a backdrop. Yeah. Because so I know people... there's different types of streamers. You know, you have your yep. interactive uh, with chat and then you have competitive uh, tournaments. Um, you know, th there's a variety that kind of goes there on like what you want with your relationship with your community. Yeah. So with your community, um, from what I'm hearing is like, you're just trying to have that establish that presence of like, okay, I'm here, but I'm enjoying the game. And then like, you're using the game to like, kind of relate to other people. Because like you said, you know, gaming is like, you know, something we can all, we can, we, we can all like fill, you know what I mean? Like we yep. all can connect with that. But yeah, as, as far as the, like, what happened with the community, it was interesting because I'm playing this game, this game is on in the background, and people may come for the game, they might see SnowRunner being played, hey, I like this game, and we might be talking about movies, we might be talking about wrestling, we might be talking about pie, we might be talking about cooking, or any other video game, or any other topic of conversation, we've touched upon mythology in other cultures uh we have an individual who's from bulgaria and we talked about bulgarian music that is popular in his country we've talked about mythology from um you know we've got somebody from they're in uh they're dutch and they're in the netherlands and it's just it's cool to be able to talk to these people and yet again use video games as that gap that just you know, they're that, that point that bridges the gap and brings us all together. So it's literally like that basis, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, so literally, you know, that's what you're doing and everything, you know, when it comes to like bringing people together, you know, you're finding that common interest, you're, um, bring, and you know, like you said, it's people all around the world. You're learning a little bit about them and their lives, you know, and you know, that's what makes Twitch Twitch. You know yep. what I mean? It, that's what literally keeps the cog wheels going. Now, <laughs> on a side note, to add some flavor to it, what is something that a clip or a moment that you literally, like, a story that, like, you just, it clicks in your brain. It's like, why did I do this? Like, what is a funny moment that you've really enjoyed with your community or something fun you've done with your community? Um, one of the fun things... <laughs> For, for even going back to just SnowRunner is truck darts. And it was a goofy thing that I had seen someone else do on a YouTube channel. And it was basically just driving trucks down a giant runway and flinging them off a cliff. And people get a kick out of it. I I'm, sorry. it so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Let me step back. Hold on. No. So you're literally yeeting trucks <laughs> off a cliff. Like we're talking oh, yeah. like roller coaster tycoon. If you guys, yep. if anybody remembers that, comment down below. Um, and if you're enjoying the show, uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We will be doing this every other Sunday as well. Um, so <laughs> let me get this straight. So it's like roller. We're talking like roller coaster tycoon. Oh yeah. Just Ro so roller coaster. So roller coaster tycoon, and a half finished roller coaster, and literally. You're you're just like you know what full send. I'm gonna send this truck off of a cliff, and that's oh, yeah. just the end of the truck. That that's, that's and it's it. hysterical. It's absolutely hysterical. I and sometimes I, they bounce, sometimes they go end over end. I've gotten more elaborate as things have uh, gone on, and I've taken trucks and I've set them up on end so they're like bowling pins. So we have truck bowling. Wait, truck? Wait. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, I have to ask, have you ever gotten a strike? No, not yet. You haven't? Not yet. Sad, sad, but it's okay. Thank you again for that story. I <laughs> Bowling pins as trucks, yep. and then you're just like going full metal, just full. literally like pedal to the metal, 
and you're just going full set and wow have you ever had them explode no unfortunately the trucks do not explode in snow runner okay. they just break they okay. just break and, and and the engine cuts out or the fuel tank <laughs> ruptures completely <laughs> tires burst you know things like that little things little things just but the, they don't the go little thing. uh, they don't go yeah. kaboom okay no. i i wish that i love i love it when that happens um okay so let's uh <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Okay, so overall, you know, what is uh now all right, let's uh let's dive back into this. So what is something that you do to like everyone has their own niche on getting away from social media, the online aspect of everything, you know, like stepping back and saying, Okay, you know, like what is do you have any hobbies or anything that you enjoy doing on all your off stream off of working and everything like what's what's a hobby that you really really enjoy like a passion um i haven't been able to really engage in it too too much just because of the the way that the world sort of kind of collectively fell on its face and have really gone too many places but uh photography i really enjoyed photography uh, um and it also kind of wraps itself into my enjoyment of things automotive so car shows, cars and coffee events, um, you know, even going to, there is about over an hour away, there's New England Dragway, which I haven't been to in a while, but yeah, quarter mile drag strip, watching cars go down, racing, stuff like that. It's, it's okay. fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Car culture is another really cool thing. And there's actually been a handful of times where I've gone to a car show and gone live on Twitch from from a car show, just right. wandering around with my phone. And it's cool because all of those people around the world who are not here, who are not in the United States, get a chance to experience what United States car culture is to us because it's different for them. They have different cars and different makes and models and manufacturers and things like that. Their car rallies, their their car meets, their car stuff is different although we're still fans of automobiles we're fans of either wrenching on things or fixing our own stuff or just simply going for a cruise with a whole bunch of friends and it's it's neat to okay. bond in a weird cultural thing like that which is also global so it's know? like it's like getting that different perspective it's like okay like this is how we do things and then like yep. everybody can experience that together plus it's a huge passion of yours Yep. And you're showing that you're showing your passion on automotive because so far from what I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you are really big into um, automotives. Uh, now, is that classic vehicles? Like I, I could I could to give it in a different perspective, I guess I can BS my way on knowledge a little bit. I don't know too much about it um my friends uh in the area i live in you know they're all about the classics uh car shows i've been to a couple uh i can't say that like i'm like you know just leaning over the edge and i'm like oh oh that car oh it just it does something to me it makes me curl my toes and it just it's just not ah uh -huh. you know <laughs> like i appreciate muscle cars i like muscle cars a lot um okay Probably 1968 to 1972, General Motors A bodies like your Chevelle, Malibu, uh, Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, like right. a Cutlass, that sort of stuff. Okay, those are cool. So those is are, that those so? Really did that awesome. like bring you into Snowrunner a little bit with the you know big rigs and going through all these terrains and everything else? Like, would you say there's like, like a connection? I like there? big off road. Big off-road lifted stuff. I've had big off-road lifted stuff as well. I've had lifted trucks, lifted blazers, um, four by fours, stuff like that. Um, okay. Big tires and suspension lifts are a lot of fun. So, would so, you um, have you ever thought about um, being a truck driver or anything like that? No. No. Just no. something that like, uh, just something you could do like in a virtual world and like you know just get that feel for it. You do know it what I mean? Fun. Do it for the fun. Do it for the fun. Yeah. All right. I, I'm hey, I respect I respect that, man. I definitely know what that's like. You know, that's like me going on a quest and uh feeling like a Viking, you know, and um it, I definitely get that. So my second question, 
My, or it wouldn't be my second. See, words are hard. You see, like, this is what I'm talking about. It's not even my second. No, no, it's probably no, like no, my no. 15, 16. No. Uh, brain is having emotional damage. <laughs> um, so when it comes to, I, would, I guess I would say, like, you know, you're big in automos, huge heavy mm -hmm. metal. You know, you love uh, your community. You love content creating. Is there any, can, can we get a sneak peek? on maybe a project that you would like to do in the near future or something that, you know, that has been just picking at your brain. I just want to pick at your brain real quick. I just want to get in there. Something and, uh... I'd be planning for the future. It, you know, and that's the funny thing too. I don't really do good at long-term plans. Um, I couldn't even tell you what I'm doing next week because it's kind of like, what do I want to do? at the time, whether it's play Skyrim or play Wreckfest or, you know, SnowRunner or whatever game that we've picked up that, you know, people want to come by, hang out, and just kick back and watch. Um, whether it's something goofy that's happening in the game or if we're going to decide on something different to do or in terms of projects, uh, man, I don't even know. It's, it's just so open-ended and it's like, well, bring it back to playing Skyrim. Skyrim is one of the biggest open-ended games that is out there right now. You can play however you want. You can go wherever you want. You can I agree. do whatever you I, want. I, I love it. I will say, let's, 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 let's stick to Skyrim. So I've stopped by your streams, okay? <laughs> and I heard that uh, from a little birdie, you, my good sir, have a thing for stealing and cheese blocks. Now, can you uh, can you kind of dive in uh, for, for uh, towards that on so, uh, how you came up with like I'm gonna just go around people's houses and I'm just gonna sell it's my cheese I yep. this is my cheese I am the cheese master uh, the thieves guild supports this so oh they do they absolutely do <laughs> they're 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 in cahoots okay? they're in they're, the cahoots. They're absolutely in cahoots so are you um, the leader of the thieves guild are you at that point in the game because I, 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 yeah. I that was one of the first things okay that was one of the first things that i actually had set out to do <laughs> because man. it was like no this is going to make my job a little bit easier <laughs> and it was interesting because when i had originally made the character it was the community who kind of uh chose what character we were making and we came up with a Khajiit, who is a cat person. And it was like, okay, all right, so we're going to be a giant anthropomorphic cat. Oh, my, oh my what God. What is oh his name? God. Wait. What, so... what, is, what is the name of this character? What? And somehow or another, we came up with the name of McMittens. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no, no, so... No. <laughs> so wait, so wait, so, so, so McMittens. McMittens the cat. Yeah, the Khajiit. McMittens the Khajiit. Okay, so McMittens, let, let me, let me try to dive into this. McMittens is a cat yep. that goes around the Skyrim mm -hmm. and is stealing cheese blocks from yep. everybody in their households or in a tavern. Like, okay. Wow. Um, Effectively, I, if we're going to a place to do a, a quest or retrieve an item or something like that, and there's a block of cheese there, the cheese supersedes everything. And it doesn't matter how much we're carrying at the time, we will throw out stuff that's worth hundreds of gold to pick up cheese blocks. That is, that is the way that it goes. That's that's just kind of how we do things. I I I love it. I it's original. I like originality. It's creative and like you let the com okay. So the community came up with McMittens. Okay, so McMittens is a yep. Khajiit that you 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 already determined. It was predetermined that you are just going to go around and still. Now, does McMittens has has McMittens ever been caught? Does there flyers around for McMittens? Like okay, there was. One time where oh Bellathor, the shopkeep in Whiterun, yes. um, apparently caught us or apparently suspected us. He dispatched uh, thugs and ruffians to kind of teach us a lesson. But uh, <laughs> we, we made quick work of them. We made quick work of them. <laughs> Absolutely, my, my friend. My friend. Yeah. I, so you basically, you said, grab your shield, and you just yelled Silva Hala, and you just went to it, right? 
pretty much. And it was funny because it wasn't even something that was predetermined. You love to see like, it. Like we just we just went, and all of a sudden <laughs> there was just, um, there was just oh hey that's a block of cheese I'm gonna take that oh, oh hey look there's god. another block of cheese I'm gonna take that oh my god I, I kind of like this cheese I'm gonna keep taking this so and you're still going on with that like have you added oh, yeah. anything with big mittens or are we just sticking with cheese like to primarily are they primarily, lactose I mean cheese. it's a it's a cat so I I assume that they're not lactose but that would be unfortunate like what do you do with all this cheese it winds up in the uh, breeze home in White Run how much cheese do you know. There is to, a everyone liberal wants coating of cheese on the floor in... So it's just everywhere. Yeah. Is it covered? Oh, yeah. Like, like I'm walking through the house, so I'm, I'm going to try to... You're kicking cheese out of the way. I'm going to yeah, try you're, to you're visualize this. kicking cheese out of the way. I'm literally, like, as soon as I enter Bree's home, I'm literally yeah. walking through a river of cheese. Yeah, basically, it's probably, at this point in time, it's just below your kneecaps. So, yeah. It's just, it's just stacked up. It's not stacked up. It's just arbitrarily. It's just on there. The floor. Oh my! It's just there. Oh my god! And it's wedges of cheese. It's giant wheels of cheese. Oh smaller god. wheels of cheese. So, so yeah. and so, to anybody watching this, comments down below. What is the craziest thing you've ever done on Skyrim or any open world game? Whether you be stealing cheese like our good friend Mick Bittens, which is absolutely fantastic, by the way. I absolutely love that. The name is so good with the sheet. It's just so goofy. It, it's so goofy. I, I like how you, you know, you do SnowRunner and then you switch over to that. All right. So let's, let's switch up our cog gears a little bit. So I have thought about something and I didn't tell you about this. Okay. Is there something, mm -hmm. do you have like a pen, a pencil or something of a small object that, um, I, I want to, I want to test something. I have a theory. I, I, There's a pen. My God. Wow. It, it has the clip and everything. You literally... Okay. So I, I actually have a challenge for you. Okay. Because okay. obviously I see that you, my good sir, have a little bit of a goatee going on. Yes. Okay. Well, because you do, I challenge you to something. Okay. okay, this is, we're going to call this, this is the beard challenge. Okay. It is, it is, it is part of the show. So we are going to see my friend. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to keep talking. We're going to keep having a good time. I want you to put this pen inside of your beard. I want you to clip it. All right. I want you to clip it in there and we're going to see who, who, whose beard is, is stronger when it cut, oh my god, look at this chat! Like, ah, uh, my god! Like, look, look at this man! All right, yeah, we can do this. There's no problem. I was not expecting this. I, I thought it was immediately gonna fall. I, mine's already slipping. Like, well, I, I, <laughs> I, I did hit it with the uh, the beard the beard wax earlier. So, oh, beard care, beard care is important. Okay, yep. so to anybody watching this uh, YouTube video, I'm just saying uh, I would definitely uh, support your brands. I, I use beard oil and beard cream. Uh, support the beards, okay? Throw away your razors and support it, okay? But I think that we're I'm going to set a timer for one minute, and I want to okay. see who can do this. Are you ready for this challenge? Are you All sure? Right, let's do it. It's going to be intense. Okay. All right. Can feel the intensity it is just literally right there like look at this man he is determined this is the storm of iron everybody he is a twitch streamer again the link is going to be down in the description below my god his beard it mine's dangling it's dangling it's dangling my dude oh my god it's it's gonna fall it's all right do a little do it do it do a little bit of a wave like left or right get that get oh my god his is thick and mine, mine's falling. Oh my god, it's falling. It, it's not gonna make it. Oh? Oh, oh. my god, it's slipping. I can see it. <laughs> all right, all right. Give me a little bit of a headbang, like a, a, a mild, like. Oh my god. Ugh. All right, let's go. All right, let's just go back and forth. Oh, oh, oh! there it goes. Oh. Let's oh. go. All right, wait, let me get a good one. Let me get a good one, because you did it too. All right, here we go. It, let's go, baby. Oh. Still the beer champion, everybody. 
That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for that one challenge, Storm of Iron. column there for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, my friend no, no. it's okay i have a little bit of length on mine so i had to, i had to do it i had to do it all right i pre <laughs> more than a pleasure that's all good oh my goodness okay so we are getting uh towards the end of um our words are hard segment um i i, I dude i appreciate you stopping oh, by hell yeah man so hell much yeah. i hope you had a blast um overall i do have a couple more questions and then we're Absolutely. probably gonna wrap this up uh thank you for taking time out of your day guys this is storm of iron again thank he you is for a twitch me. streamer he does stream on twitch uh you want to go ahead and do a plug-in for us like you know i i want to help out in any way i can shape or form um i'm not just going to be to everybody that is watching this in future episodes this is going to be friends that come on. It is not just going to be content creators on Twitch, YouTube, TikTokers, Instagram, Hover, whatever, uh, whatever content you create. It is just going to be me diving into your brain and literally figuring out what ticks and overall what words are hard for you to say and try to spit them out of your mouth because it's kind of like a, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, just go ahead and um, just do your yeah. thing. Do your thing. Um, we stream uh, during the weekdays. So it's usually about 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that we kick off. And it's been Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So we just go for a couple hours or whatever seems appropriate. And we play a variety of games. We talk about a lot of different things. There's lots of discussion about food. There's a whole lot of discussion about food. So much so that the Discord channel even has a specific area just for food. So, guys, down in the comment section, put down what would be your last meal before going into battle, my friend. I, I, I don't, I can't say how happy I was to have you as my first guest. I've known uh, to tell you guys a little bit uh, before we wrap things up. I've known Storm of Iron for a little bit. He is like, I'm not just saying because he's on the show. I will say this overall. He has said nothing but kind words, kind things about me and so many others. Uh, the charity events that uh, we hold and everything else. Please go check him out. Uh, support, you know, it really would, you know, mean a lot to me. And I know it would mean a lot to him. My dude, it has Appreciate been it. an absolute amazing pleasure. Everybody, right now, we're going to wrap things up. I'm your host, the Mad Viking King. This is my guest, Storm of Iron. We are both content creators on Twitch. We are very good friends. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. And I will see you in the next episode. Words are hard. Thank you guys so much for coming on out. Put your comments down below. I also stream on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Storm of Iron, you've been an absolute pleasure. Is there Thank anything else? Much. Is there any final words you'd like to tell everybody? Um, in terms of just everything, just be good to one another. Lift each other up and be good to one another. Absolutely, my friend. Be kind, everybody. I love your face. We're going to be doing this every other Sunday. I'll see you guys in the next episode.